This video is going to show you how to do a Friedman's test in SPSS. We can view the Friedman's test as a non-parametric equivalence, so a one way within subjects and over. The example we're going to look at today is a relatively straightforward small scale experiment in which participants came into the lab on three separate occasions. On these occasions, they either consumed no alcoholic drink at all, they had four alcoholic drinks, or they drank ten alcoholic drinks. We then gave them a different scenario and asked them to respond to how they would react. So the scenario we gave them was you've just left the bar and are shouting in the street. Three police officers approach you and tell you to be quiet and go home. How likely would you be to comply with this request? And we score this from one, I would immediately be quiet and go home, to five, no chance, no one tells me to be quiet and go home. Because what we're interested in here is the effect of alcohol on people's decision making. If you go out on late at night, any around closing time, you can see this sort of situation happens all the time, in which we see individuals like this person, obviously has had a few too many drinks and decides that he can take on three police officers, despite the fact that all three of those officers could probably pick this person up over their head. So all participants attend three sessions and give a response on the Likert scale. Because it's a Likert scale, it's an attitude scale, scored one to five, the data is ordinal data. So you really should be analyzing this using a non-parametric test. What we want to do is run a Friedman's test to see if there's a significant effect of drinks on responses to our question. Now there's two different methods that we can use to do the Friedman's test in SPSS. I'm going to show you both. The first way is the most basic way and it's probably the most commonly used. However, it's quite limited. It doesn't give you an effect size and it doesn't do any pairwise comparisons for you either. If you want to jump straight to the more advanced method, if you just go to this timing of the video and you'll be able to see the analysis of that method without seeing this first more basic method that I'm going to show you. If you want to do the most basic method, we go to analyze, non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues, and then K related samples. You see above it is two related samples, that's the Wilcoxon test, and there's already a video online for that one. So K related samples is basically when we have more than two within subjects conditions. And this gives us our tests for several related samples. See the default is the Friedman's test. This test here actually, I'm going to be discussing this later on in the video when we talk about effect size for this. So to run this test is relatively straightforward. We just need to click across our three variables into our test variable. We could ask for descriptive statistics, but these are of limited use. It's gonna give you means and standard deviations for this data and it's not really the most suitable measure for this type of data, so we're not gonna include that. We can ask for exact p-values as well if we wanted, but we're just gonna stick with the asymptotic p-value. Click continue, and that's all you need to do. So just click them across, and basically at default, it does pretty much everything you want it to do when using this window. Then we click OK, and this gives us our output. So the output's really basic output. The first thing is the mean ranks. Because it's a non-parametric test, it's all based on the ranking of data. As you can see, if we just look at this raw data, we can see there is no drinks, the mean rank is 1.5. For four drinks, the mean rank is 1.87. And for 10 drinks, the mean rank is 2.63. Already, we can see after 10 drinks, people are more likely to be towards the far end of the scale, no chance, no one tells me to go home and be quiet, answer with higher scores, than they are in the no drinks condition. Of course, this doesn't tell us that much. What we really need to look at is our test statistic box here. First thing that appears is N, just the number of participants. We have 15 participants in the data set. Then we've got a chi-squared statistic. This is the Friedman's test statistic. It is a chi-squared statistic. And then we have our degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom is simply K minus one. So that's the number of experimental conditions minus one. And there's our asymptotic p-values. So there's our p-value here. So we can just write this up accordingly. There is a significant effect of the number of drinks consumed on the extent to which participants thought it would be a good idea to argue with the police. And then we report our chi-squared statistic with the degrees of freedom and our p-value. This is relatively limited though. It's simply given us a p-value. We don't know which conditions differ. From looking at it, you'd probably say, well, 10 drinks looks like it's going to differ from no drinks. 
However, does four drinks differ from ten drinks? Does, does no drink significantly differ from four drinks? We probably give our reader a lot more information about which conditions differ, and we'd also want to give them a fact size. In order to do this, we can use our other method of producing the Friedman's test. In order to do this more advanced version of the Friedman's test, we go to Analyze, Non-Parametric Test, and then straight into Related Samples here, rather than using the legacy dialogues as we did before. And this gives us our non-parametric test for two or more related samples. First thing we need to do is say customize analysis. The reason we do this is because we know we want to do a Friedman's test so we can tell SPSS the specific things we wish to do. Then we click on fields and then we'd simply click these across into test fields. These are the conditions we wish to compare. And then we go to settings and then customize tests. We need to ask for Kendall's coefficients of concordance. This is going to give us our estimate of effect size. And then we can click Run. This gives us quite a different window than our previous one. All it says here is, here's our null hypothesis that the distribution is the same. This is uh, the test that we did, and this is the significance, and it's told us to reject our null hypothesis. Now if we double click on this, it opens this model viewer window. So it gives us a frequency count for each condition, so you can see what the data looks like here. And then it gives us this window. So this has got some really useful information in it. Total N. Now it gives us our candles W, which is an effect size. As you can see, a test statistic appears well. This is, again, just the same as before. So this is your Friedman's chi-squared. And then we've got a degrees of freedom and our asymptotic p-value. So these numbers and our total n is exactly the same as what we saw in the more basic method. Well, now we've got our Kendall's W as well. We could now report, rather than just giving the p-value, we can report our Kendall's W afterwards as an effect size. Kendall's W can be interpreted just like a Cohen's D. So we can say a Kendall's W of 0.2 is considered a small, 0.5 medium, and 0.8 large. So in this example, we've got an effect size of 0.39 so we'd say we've got a small to medium effect size in this case so this window will also allow us to do something else it'll allow us to do our pairwise comparisons so we go to the bottom here with view and then we can click pairwise comparisons now this is produced us our pairwise comparison window and this now does our comparisons between no drinks and four drinks as you can see there's no statistically significant effect here. No drinks compared to 10 drinks. We've got a statistically significant difference between participants consume no drinks and 10 drinks. They're significantly more likely to argue with the police. And then we've got the comparison between four drinks and 10 drinks. And as you can see, this is statistically significant difference as well. These are the uncorrected p-values. You'll notice there's also an adjusted significance column here. This is a Bonferroni correction. So what is happening is there is a multi this figure here is being multiplied by the number of comparisons being made. So it's probably easiest to see here that there's three comparisons being made. So our adjusted significance is 0 0.002 times 3, which gives us 0 0.006. So what you'll notice with the four drinks, ten drinks comparison is actually influenced uh, quite a lot by this correction. So the Bonferroni corrected difference is not significant. The uncorrected difference is significant. Whether you do a correction or not, there's no universal rule whether you should always correct or you should not correct. There's, it's a trade-off between type one and type two errors. And it's a decision that you should make yourself before the event, whether you're going to do a Bonferroni correction or not. So we could also add this to our write-up as well. So after we've written up Friedman's test along with Kendall's W, we could also now make a statement that this was the result of participants being less likely to argue in the no drink compared to the 10 drink condition, giving our p-value, as well as being less likely to argue in the four drink compared to the 10 drink condition. There was no significant difference between the no drink and the four drink condition, and we report all the p-values as we do so.